The first indoor tree was documented in Strasbourg, France in 1605. Documentation shows that trees then were often decorated with roses, sugar wafers, apples, and other sweet treats. Fast forward a few hundred years and the indoor decorated tree during the holidays was all the rage. But in the mid 1800s, there's a very specific origin of the modern decorated tree. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. Another unmistakable holiday image is the Christmas tree. Going out as a family, chopping it down or picking one out, and decorating it has been a beloved tradition for centuries. But its earliest origins were a little bit different than our tradition today. The earliest account starts in the 1500s, predating the use of the phrase Christmas tree and even the use of trees themselves. In many towns across Europe, especially in early English towns. There was wide use of the Maypole, a large pole erected in the center of a town that would be used to celebrate summer festivals. During the wintertime, these poles would be decorated and wrapped in holly and ivy. This is widely believed to be the precursor to the Christmas tree. Even in the 1500s, there were myths surrounding the origins of the Christmas tree. But one of the most popular throughout Europe was the legend of St. Boniface. His story starts in the 8th century. Around the year 723, Boniface took on the task ordered by the Pope to evangelize part of modern-day Germany. The legend says that during his travels, he was told of a pagan community that, during the wintertime, would make human sacrifices to the thunder god Thor. This ritual would take place at the base of their sacred oak tree called the Thunder Oak. Boniface decided to intervene. He planned to destroy the Thunder Oak not only to prevent the human sacrifice, but also to show the pagans that he would not be struck down by lightning at the hands of their god. As the legend goes, Boniface and his companions reached the village on Christmas Eve, arriving in time to interrupt the ritual. Boniface approached the pagan crowd with his staff in hand and said, Here is the Thunder Oak. The cross of Christ shall break the hammer of the false god Thor. There was a small child laid out for the sacrifice. The executioner raised his hammer to strike the child, but Boniface extended his staff, blocking the blow. It shattered the executioner's hammer, saving the child's life. Boniface then picked up an axe, and as legend has it, took one swing at the tree and knocked it down, roots and all. The tree was broken in four pieces. Afterwards, Boniface had a chapel built from this wood. As cool as this legend is, the main focus of the story lay just beyond the fallen thunder oak. Boniface looked around and pointed to a small, unassuming fir tree, saying, This little tree, a young child of the forest, shall be your holy tree tonight. It is the wood of peace. See how it points upward to heaven? Let this be called the tree of the Christ child. Gather about it, not in the wild wood, but in your own homes. There it will shelter no deeds of blood but loving gifts and rites of kindness. Another alteration of this legend says that after cutting the tree down, he had it hung upside down to represent the shape of the cross. Believe it or not, this practice continues today. People all across the world are catching on to this rediscovered trend, from homes, hotels, to museums. Even retail stores like Target are selling upside down Christmas trees. Whether or not this modern day trend stems directly from St. Boniface, I think we can all agree that everyone loves a good legend. Another possible origin for the Christmas tree was the paradise tree, popularized in the medieval plays about Adam and Eve. A paradise tree was a fir tree, hung with apples, tinsel, gingerbread, and pretzels that represented the Garden of Eden. This most likely led to common German people setting up their own paradise trees in their homes on December 24th, the religious feast day of Adam and Eve. The first indoor tree was documented in Strasbourg, France in 1605. Documentation shows that trees then were often decorated with roses, sugar wafers, apples, and other sweet treats. Fast forward a few hundred years and the indoor decorated tree during the holidays was all the rage. But in the mid 1800s, there's a very specific origin of the modern decorated tree. In 1848, an image of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert was printed in the Illustrated London News. The image depicted the royals and their children standing around a decorated tree with gifts underneath. 
It's commonly believed that Prince Albert transplanted this tradition from his home country of Germany. A few years later, this same image was printed in Godey's Ladies' Book, the most popular women's magazine of the day, under the title, The Christmas Tree. This single image solidified in popular culture the foundation of our Christmas tree today. The tradition of publicly lighting a massive tree is definitely an American tradition. This started on December 24th, 1923, on the grounds of the National Mall in Washington, D.C. This 60-foot fir tree became the first national Christmas tree and was covered in 2,500 electric lights. Shortly after, America's most famous public tree first went up at the Rockefeller Center in New York City. Since the building was still under construction in 1931 and had employed so many people during the Great Depression, the lighting of the Rockefeller tree soon became a symbol of hope for all New Yorkers. Ever since, the Christmas tree has become fundamental to our popular modern Christmas traditions. Thank you.